Hi everyone, Dr. Joel Schwartz here again. This is video three in our series of five videos on stress. In the first video we talked about the many effects that stress has on your body. In the second video we talked about the actual physiological response to stress. In this video we're going to talk about the daily rhythms that your hormones are secreted throughout the day. Especially we're going to talk about the hormone cortisol and how it's high in the morning and low at night in the normal situation. In this video presentation, we are going to talk about the daily rhythms of hormone secretion and how they relate to your response to stress. Before we start talking about the rhythms, let's give an overview of the different kinds of stress responses. Each of these stress responses is treated differently, so it's important to know the difference. Again, please remember that cortisol is the most important hormone with regard to prolonged stress. There can be problems with the amount of cortisol released from the adrenal glands, that being either too much or not enough. Too much is called adrenal hyperfunction, and too little is called adrenal hypofunction. There can also be an inability to turn off the stress response, and this occurs with a problem with the midbrain. There can also be a problem with the timing of cortisol release from the adrenal glands. In this presentation, we're going to talk specifically about problems that relate to the timing of cortisol release. As I said, we're going to be discussing rhythm problems and stress. I am sure this is quite a different way of looking at stress than you're used to. However, these are the actual physiological mechanisms that are associated with stress. We'll be talking about the two rhythm problems listed above the cortisol circadian rhythm and the melatonin circadian rhythm. By the way, a circadian rhythm is a biological process that displays an oscillation of about 24 hours. These rhythms are observed in plants, animals, bacteria, and fungi. I am sure you can understand that there are rhythms that are important to your health. As human beings, we are controlled somewhat by the timings of the sun and the moon. Ideally, our bodies and brains want to wake up and get active when the sun comes up and slow down when the sun goes down. Many animals are timed to the daylight cycles and even to the seasons. We are a lot like them. So just like there's a rhythm to the days and the nights and to the seasons, there's also a rhythm to the patterns of hormone secretion in our bodies. As I mentioned in my other stress videos, cortisol is the main hormone that is secreted during times of prolonged stress. It is intimately related to the hormone melatonin, which you may recognize as being important for sleep. People have been purchasing melatonin as a supplement to use for sleep. For some people it helps them sleep and for others it doesn't. The reason it doesn't help some people is cortisol is the real problem and not melatonin, but we'll discuss that in a little while. Cortisol is the hormone that gets you going at the start of the day. It should be high in the morning and low at night. Melatonin is the hormone that helps you sleep. It should be low in the morning and high before bed. So cortisol and melatonin have a reciprocal relationship. Our hectic lifestyles that are stress-filled wreak havoc with this relationship and throw it out of balance. This results in many health problems. When the cortisol or melatonin rhythms are off, problems appear. In this slide, you'll see some of the symptoms that occur when your rhythm is off. These are very common in our society today. Here are some of the common symptoms. Can't wake up in the morning. Can't fall asleep. Can't stay asleep. Not rested after a night of sleep. Not able to recover from the activity that you've engaged in during the day. Drop of energy between 4 to 7 p.m. That's very common. Unexplainable blood sugar fluctuations. And inflammation, pain, or headaches in a daily pattern. Melatonin is the immune enhancing hormone and cortisol is the anti-inflammatory hormone. They both push and pull against each other. The symptoms you see in this slide can be the result of a problem with melatonin but it can also be the result from too much cortisol. I'll give you a few seconds to read the list. Do you seem to have problems when the seasons change or when there's less light in the day, when it's cloudy, or when you're in a dark room? Are you having frequent colds? If you don't get enough sleep, do you get sick? These are indications that your melatonin rhythm is off. 
It's not a good idea to just start taking melatonin or cortisol. High levels of one or the other will throw you out of balance. These hormones work together and they also work with other hormones as well. Here are some of the symptoms that can appear when the cortisol rhythm is off. Notice that it can be low in the morning. Cortisol can also drop quickly during the day or it can be too high at night. There are other possibilities as well. It can be too high in the morning. I'll give you a few seconds to look at some of the symptoms that occur during each one of these times during the day. When your rhythms are consistently off, you can get diseases that are related to the poor rhythms. Examples include cardiovascular disease, diabetes and weight gain, mood disturbances like depression and anxiety, reduced libido, migraine headaches, autoimmune diseases, intestinal motility disorders like irritable bowel syndromes, problems with your mucosal defense systems, that's the lining of your gut, sleep problems, and frequent infections. Now let's talk a little bit about diagnosing rhythm problems. Pictured above is the results of an adrenal stress index. This is a saliva test which measures cortisol throughout your day. We use this test to help diagnose problems with the cortisol circadian rhythm. As you can see in the above graph, cortisol is highest at 8 a.m., then it gradually drops down throughout the day until it is at its lowest at midnight. This is a very healthy cortisol rhythm. Although melatonin is not graphed here, understand that it would be very high at midnight and decreasing until morning. When I analyze the results of this test, I make sure that each reading falls within the blue area on the graph. Also important is the overall slope of the curve. If the slope of the curve is off, your results are abnormal even if each of the readings are within the blue area. This is another adrenal stress index. This is a profile with too high a cortisol level in the morning and throughout the day as well. This individual didn't get any rest from sleep. Also, the spike at 4 p.m. indicates a blood sugar problem where cortisol is trying to elevate low blood sugar. This is characteristic of somebody who feels very tired around 4 p.m. or a couple hours after lunch. This is another adrenal stress index showing a cortisol profile. This person has almost no cortisol output in the morning and it stays low throughout the day. Although the noon, 4 p.m. and midnight values are within the blue range, the slope of the curve is off. This is the profile of someone with adrenal exhaustion. Their adrenal glands have been stressed to the max over a long period of time. They'll have a very hard time getting up in the morning and will be exhausted throughout most of the day. Treatment for rhythm problems depends upon the results of the test. There is no cookie cutter approach. Generally speaking, however, the techniques we use are as follows. First and foremost, we must get your blood sugar under good control. If you are missing meals, eating late at night, or eating the wrong foods, it will be very difficult to get your stress under control. Besides the diet, we also use herbs and nutrients to regulate your blood sugar if they're necessary. We also use special herbs that will modulate your stress response. These are called adaptogens. We use a very thorough and comprehensive exercise program and we also use relaxation techniques including yoga, meditation and muscle relaxation. There's more detail on the treatment of stress and rhythm problems in our treatment of stress video. In summation, I'd like you to know that diagnosing rhythm problems with a saliva test helps target the treatment of stress. Besides the parameters I've shown you, there are other measurements that we get from the saliva test that are helpful in diagnosing your stress response. We aren't going to go into all of them at this time. In addition, there are other tests we use to diagnose your problems with stress. More about those in the next video, Diagnosing Stress Problems. Please watch our other videos on stress. If you watch all of them, you'll get a complete picture of what stress means to your health. You'll also find out how we diagnose stress and what we do to treat stress. It's a good idea to watch the videos in the order listed above. 
Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or would like to make an appointment, our contact information follows this slide.